Okay, it's 6.30. At this time, I'd like to open the Administrative Services Committee meeting for December 2nd, 2019. Please call the roll. Here. She's excused. Here. 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 I'd like a motion to approve the minutes of the November 18th, 2019 committee meeting. Councilor Tesorio, Councilor Hill. Yes. 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 Is there any old business to attend to? Seeing none, moving right along to new business. Item number one, Mayor Barlow requests a transfer of funds from A.1990.0460 general fund contingent to A.3620.0440 code enforcement contracted services for the demolition of 110 East 4th Street in the amount of $16,900. Mr. Mayor? Thank you. Uh, this is a property Councillor Wilmont's familiar with, 110 East 4th Street. It's a home that the city recently took back from uh, a bank that was in the stuck in the foreclosure process for a very long time. Because it was in the foreclosure process for so long, it became dilapidated. It was extremely overgrown, falling down. It needed a, a ton of work. Kurt Miller assessed it uh, in the code office and uh, said it's past the point of repair. So we were keeping our eye on it um, because it is actually wedged, set back quite a bit off the street. It's wedged in between two homes, and it's in a neighborhood that's bouncing back. Uh, the land bank just redid a home on the same block. The properties behind it are coming back, participating in the ORA zone. Um, so there's a lot of investment happening, so we think this is a good candidate uh, uh, to take down, to have demolished. We uh, went out and selected, uh, solicited three quotes. This is the uh, lowest quote. I can read off the uh, three quotes that we got if I uh, make sure I have them. And um, once we do take this down, uh, as we do with every property that we demolish, we will make the uh, surrounding property owners aware, and I know of uh, two of the three immediate uh, neighbors who are interested in purchasing the lot. So the, give me one second here. If you can't find them, I have them. You have them? Why don't do. you read them for me? I think I grabbed my wrong folder. Low bid was uh, bronze contracted at $16,900. Sessler wrecking was $24,900. And diversified construction services was $30,800. Sounds right. <laughs> so that's the, uh, uh, that's the uh, proposal. And uh, once uh, it passes tonight and then passes next week, We'll schedule the demolition. I'm not sure if they can get it done now with the snow, but certainly uh, first thing in the spring at the latest, and then we can uh, engage the property owners and see, uh, number one, who wants to offer the most money for the lot, but even more important, in my opinion, is see what the use of the lot is. If you go by the lot, it's in such a way where I'm, I don't think uh, building another property, another building there is uh, the best uh, case scenario. So. I could see these uh, neighbors either extending their side yards or the neighbor uh, who's on 3rd Street extending their backyard. All right, thank you. Any comments or questions for the mayor on this proposal? Seeing none, can I have a motion, please? Councillor Wilmot, Councillor Hill. Councillor Yes. 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 Mayor's office will uh, provide one. Item number two. The engineering department requests transfer of funds from the high dam account to the engineering department. Is there anyone here to speak to that? Uh, Mr. Johnson, maybe? I'll speak to that. Um, <clears throat> so the engineer's office is in need of a wide format scanner, platter, and printer. It's a combined item. Um, they're expensive, and the engineer's office has no money in... Uh, in the account for uh, the kind of equipment. Usually we get $2,500 in the engineer's account for supplies. Um, <clears throat> the high dam account did not use all of uh, the money in the 440 account. Um, we, we put in extra money usually for uh, out of scope services or General Electric and for Brookfield. And so 
<coughs> there's a little bit of money left. I'd like to move it uh, into the engineer's <coughs> uh, account and uh, buy the scanner. The scanner is the most important piece. Of, we need to start scanning our documents because uh, you guys have all been in, in the office. Uh, the pigeonholes are full of drawings and you know for preservation this this is a what Jeff wants to start it off with and so that's a good project all right very good any questions uh, just one more just one comment uh, or concern I just want to know is this replacing an existing piece of equipment uh, or are we getting a, a second one so the the scanner is the main piece of equipment that we're looking for <clears throat> so we can scan these documents and preserve them um, the plotter that we have and the copier that we have are, are both old. They're, uh, they're out of warranty. There is no service contract left on them. They currently work, but <clears throat> it's, time, it's time to get a scanner. And the, the best way to do it is get the three in one. Uh, you know, we, we've looked at different options, and if you only buy the scanner, You've got a 50-year-old plotter that's ready to go. It, it just, I don't know for sure. We may get uh, a little bit of trade-in on the copy machine. But uh, ultimately, this, this is a, the way that uh, I think you should go, is buy this piece of equipment that's a three-in-one. Sounds like a good idea to me. Three-in-one, multi-use. Any questions or concerns? At this point, seeing none, can I have a motion, please? Councillor Hill, Councillor Tesorio. Councillor Ferdinand. Yes. Hill. Yes. Councillor Yes. Hill. Yes. <coughs> Item number three, the engineering department requests approval of change order number one for the general contract with WCA Roofing and Sheet Metal Company Incorporated for the 2019 <coughs> roofing project in the amount of $1,497.04. Mr. Johnson. All right, so <coughs> we put the uh, three different roofs together uh, this past uh, in the fall, and uh, the original plumbing came up through the roof down at the, uh, the pump station on the water treatment pump house, very close to the wall. And the new roof also included uh, additional um, <coughs> insulation. The insulation pitches uh, the water into these drains. In order to get a good seal on these drains, <coughs> they, they had to uh, make the modification. Um, I, there's, there's no, nothing else you could do. You, know, you can't put a new roof on and have a drain leak. So uh, th th this is a change order that this work has been done, and, but I couldn't really stop these guys uh, and wait for approval on a $1,400 item. So, okay, understand. Any questions from the council? Seeing none, can I have a motion, please? Councillor uh, Wilmot, Councillor uh, Hill. Councillor Forty. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Yes. 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 Item number four, the engineering department requests that the mayor be authorized to sign amendment number nine with GHD Consulting Engineers, LLC, to include the professional engineering services for area three of the sanitary sewer rehabilitation. Mr. Johnson? Okay, so <coughs> amendment nine is to the original contract. When, <coughs> when we started into uh, the rehab work, GHD began it, <coughs> and they've done all the rehab work for the consent decree. <coughs> area three is the area that is in the seventh ward. And it uh, entails a lot of newer construction, and yet we still have some areas that we need to address. Uh, we've done some smoke testing and some TV work, and now it's time to put it on paper. Um, <coughs> the consent decree included um, just three quarters of the west side be separated, but all of it needed to be rehabbed to try to limit the amount of water going into the wastewater treatment plant. So this work will amount to <coughs> pulling liners, uh, you know, fixing manholes, maybe removing uh, yard drains or 
um, catch basin that was built, you know, illicit discharge or connections to the sanitary sewer. So, I I think they've done a good job all along, <coughs> and uh, I recommend that we continue to stay with them. All right. Thank you for that explanation. Uh, any questions from the council on this expenditure? Seeing none, can I have a motion, please? Councilor Hill, Councilor Tesorio. Yes. 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 Item number five, the Office of Community Development requests that the mayor be authorized to sign change order number five for the downtown revitalization initiative, Pocket Park and Riverwalk Enhancement Project. Mr. Rudzik. Thank you, Councilor. Um, so this is uh, the next two items, uh, change order five and six, regarding the uh, Water Street Square project or the Pocket Park, as you know from our downtown revitalization initiative. Um, so change order five was really regarding um, re making the re necessary repairs to uh, West First Street sidewalks, and so that's in the amount of fi uh, $15,072, um, <coughs> sorry, $15,072.42. And so um, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a, a change order that uh, will increase the overall contract amount with W.D. Malone because there was additional work beyond the scope that was required. All right. Thank you. Any questions from the council? Seeing none, can I have a motion, please? <coughs> Councilor Hill, Councilor Wilmot. Councilor Brady. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Item number six. The Office of Community Development requests that the mayor be authorized to sign change order number six for the Oswego Downtown Revitalization Initiative Pocket Park and Riverwalk Enhancement Project. Mr. Rudzik. This will be the uh, final change order request from W.D. Malone in order to substantially complete the project and close out the entire uh, project with the final pay app. And so that's in the amount of $90,015.83. And that was really to extend the ADA ramp um, as part of the pocket park, as well as uh, repair um, the water line that was struck during the uh, construction project. So um, it's, a, it's a big ticket item, but it was necessary in order to move forward with the project. And again, this will be the last change order that will correspond to the final pay up and close out the project. And then I can submit for reimbursement from the state for the $680,000 from the DRI. All right. Any questions? Councilor Tesorio. Why is this a change order? What's that? This kind of money, why is this a change order? I mean, why is it a change order? We didn't have time. I mean, I understand the water line break, but the ADA ramp? <coughs> well, we had decided um, in conjunction with the project team with uh, DPW, um, WD Malone, and Delta that in order to really uh, make a better project, um, to extend the uh, ADA ramp further. Um, right now we did have an ADA ramp, but we felt that it would be more um, constructive to, for the project to extend it further. That cost itself was nominal. It was only like a four or $5,000 cost. The main cost for the 90,000 change order was really just striking the, uh, the water line on West First Street when we um, um, were doing the initial um, project, so. Okay, thank you. And just so I'm clear on the ADA uh, ramp, is that the uh, ramp that's along the, like the north side of the park, along the building? Is that what we're talking about, a, a ramp? Um, What's the location of this? I don't know the location that you're referring to. Um, Tom, can you help me out with that, where that ramp was, the ADA ramp extension? That was the lower section between Water Street and the linear walk. Yep. Okay. All right. Part of that is actually the cost of the water line. We put a whole new line down that yeah. section. Okay. No, I, I get it. I just was curious on where this, this ramp was uh, yeah. in, in conjunction with the project. The, uh, the ADA part is actually, if you remember, the one business owner who was irate about everything, who was concerned about the curve and the distributor getting in and out of the ramp. So we placed more pavers down instead of the curve. So that All right, thanks for that explanation. Any other questions or concerns? Seeing none, can I have a motion, please? Councilor Wilmot, Councilor Hill. Councilor Cordial. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. 
Item number seven, the Wastewater Department requests approval of the bid submitted by Butler Disposal Systems Incorporated for transportation of dewatered sludge to the Bristol Hill Landfill. Uh, is there anybody here to speak to this? Uh, it's pretty cut and dry. There was one bidder, uh, it was Butler Disposal, and the bid came in at $12.75 a ton. Is there any questions or concerns uh, about this bid? Seeing none, can I have a motion please? Councilor Hill, Councilor Tesorio. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor yes. 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 I believe that's the last item. Is there anything else we need to discuss in this committee? Seeing none, can I have a motion to adjourn? Councilor Wilmot, Councilor Tesorio. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Uh, at this time, I'd like to call the Physical Services Committee meeting for December 2nd, 2019 to order. Please call the roll. Here. 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 Excused. Here. Could you move? Uh, is there any old business to come before this committee? Um, seeing none, we'll move on to new business. Um, I'm sorry, out of order here. Distracted. Uh, could I get a motion to approve the minutes of our November 18th, 2019 meeting? Councilor Wilmot, Councilor Gozik. Yes. 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 Everybody gets one, right? No? Okay. Um, I no old business to come before this committee. We'll move on to new business under communication. Uh, item number one, the city clerk's office has received a request from Todd Wattis for use of public space along West First Street to place gifts of winter clothing on the trees for those in need. Um, is there anyone here to speak to this item? Okay, I did have a discussion um, with the clerk's office and Mr. Wattis um, is apparently open to uh, other locations. The trees on West First that he was looking at are pretty new and if we're going to be putting any sort of strain on them it's probably not a good idea. Um, so we're going to work with him uh, to pick the best location, probably closer to the new pocket park and the uh, northern side of West First Street. So are there any questions on this? Okay. Uh, could I have a motion please? Councillor Gozik, Councillor Wilmot. Yes. 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 Uh, is there any other business to come before this committee? Uh, seeing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Councilor Wilmot, Councilor Gozik. Yes. 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 At this time, I'd like to call the Planning and Development Committee meeting Monday, December 2nd, 2019, to order. Call the roll. Here. 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 <clears throat> Can I get a motion to approve the October 2nd, 2019 minutes? Councillor Cordino, Councillor McBurdy. Councillor Tedrero. Yes. Councillor Yes. Councillor Yes. Any old business to come before this committee? I see none. I will call uh, item number one, and I'm going to refer this to Councillor uh, Caracoli. Uh, thank you. Uh, first and foremost, uh, let me apologize for that, the inconvenience that, that uh, I take full responsibility for creating. Uh, this is a presentation by National Grid. Uh, I would consider this old business. It w nothing was, was ever transacted the last time other than a presentation by uh, the company. This concerns the Pipeline 55 relocation project upgrading natural gas infrastructure in the city of Oswego. Um, if you recall, it was some time ago, several months ago, that uh, the company and um, uh, Mr. Weisel uh, and others uh, presented <coughs> their initial uh, plan. Uh, and to be candid, it, it didn't turn out so well. Uh, at least for the company, there were, there were, there were many, many questions and uh, not enough answers uh, to, to satisfy the council, uh, the the presentation was was withdrawn essentially uh, to refine uh, the, the 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 plan uh, to meet with the uh, concerns of of the council that were expressed that that evening and then in meetings that were subsequent to that uh, initial presentation. Uh, I've been a part of, I believe all of them, if not almost all of them, and, and, and some of the council has as well. Um, and without uh, stealing Mr. Weisel's thunder, I think this uh, plan that you're about to hear is a, uh, um, uh, a remarkable uh, change 
what was uh, initially presented. Uh, so with that, um, I know that uh, Ben Weisel from the company is here, and, and just, uh, just a testament to how important, at least I'm implying, uh, this, this presentation is to the company. I count uh, just shy of, I think, 10 company representatives that are here. They're, they're, they're breaking our, uh, our, our crowd record here <laughs> uh, for a Monday night. Uh, but this, if you recall, this request will likely also include consideration of a waiver of the noise ordinance. Uh, that was the initial ask, if you will. Um, but I think, uh, and I would recommend that we keep an open mind on that, but I do think that the presentation will likely result in, in limited, if any, breach of that noise uh, ordinance. Um, but as a safeguard measure, I, I think that that will be part of the ask. Uh, I'm not going to delay this any further or introduce uh, Mr. Ben Weisel from uh, National Grid. I think he's got some, some uh, presentation, some, some actual uh, blow up uh, um, maps and things to show you all. And the easels are set up. So Ben, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much. I want to thank uh, Mr. Caracoli and also Rob Johnson and Mr. Cardino for meeting with us uh, prior to this meeting to review our, our ideas and ways to address your concerns. Uh, so again, my name is Ben Weisel. I'm here representing National Grid in connection with our proposed bypass of the existing uh, natural gas transmission pipeline that's located under the Oswego River. Um, as the council re recalls, I'm sure, um, and as Mr. Caracola mentioned, uh, we were here several months ago during which the council expressed some strong concerns uh, regarding the noise and overnight construction associated with this project. We want to let you know that we took these concerns very seriously. Uh, the 10 members of National Grid's team who work on this project met one or two times uh, every single week for months to come up with ideas that we hope that you can agree to um, that will reduce the impact, reduce the noise, and reduce the number of overnight uh, construction days. And again, we're, we're here to have a conversation. We want to hear your, your feedback and explain the ideas that we've come, come up with and uh, hopefully we can come to a consensus. Um, so I'll just, I'll just jump right into it. Uh, so there are three, three, um, three ideas that we came up with, three solutions. Uh, the first is a reduction in construction impacts on local residents. I'm just going to come up here. So essentially what we did in simple terms is we located the location of our construction Further from home, um, the west side of the river, uh, just north of Burden Drive, was our initial uh, proposed drill entry point. So, because the drill entry point was located uh, in our right of way, which was our preferred location previously, we were locating a lot of our noise and work very close to home. And we understood their concerns. So therefore, we reached an easement agreement with the owners of the Oswego Country Club to relocate the drill entry point to a tree-lined area off of one of the, uh, the holes of the Country Club. So the, the work that we're doing that's the noisiest will take place far from us. Um, and I actually have a table that shows, I'll explain this in a minute. Um, as a result, the residents will be less impacted by our drilling work. In addition, on the east side, so on the east side, our exit for the drill was really located in between St. Luke's and Pine Lake. So we're relocating it to the east side of Pontiac, uh, a little bit further away from the nursing home, again, to reduce the noise. Um, unfortunately, because we're a public utility, we have customers in Oswego, we have to provide utility equipment and structures close to homes. It's just it's, it's a necessity. We can't locate the equipment and the structures away from homes because our customers need to be where our pipes are located. So in addition to trying to 
located as far as possible. Um, we also are proposing uh, to reduce the number of generators that we were going to be using for the project. Uh, we previously proposed powering our construction equipment by relying on these generators. The generate, generators are among the loudest pieces of construction equipment the National Grid typically uses. In order to address the Council's concerns regarding noise, the National Grid determined it could power its equipment using electricity from our existing electric service in the area. And as a result of that, over here, so this shows the uh, the noise from the, the equipment. So the, the chart that I just showed you. I'd be more interested in the, the, the scheduling. The scheduling, sure. So again, um, as I said before, we previously proposed 66 days of overnight construction. We're now proposing 11 days of overnight construction. The construction will, will start possibly uh, sometime in the spring of 2021 and end in the fall of 2021. Um, during the day, when the code requires a maximum I think it's a little premature now, but, but I, I'm trying to get my hands around um, the affected areas. So how does the DBA change that, that those 11 days you're going to be working at night compared to any daytime activity? So What's the DBA is the equivalent of conversational speech or digital. Right. So it's, we're hoping that the 11 days is, is the minimum amount of people um, and 65 DBA will result in only 14 properties on the west side of the United States because again, you can see most of the trees on top And on the, uh, on the west side, it's all, I'm sorry, on the east side, it's only a portion of the nursing home. Okay, okay. I, I understand that. My question is if you can do this work at 50 DBA during the night, What's the difference during the day? 
So you're not saying that you're going to go, it's going to be 65, it could be still 50 or under 50. So 65 is, so these are temperature are the equivalent of the noise that we expect in that circle. So okay, I see what you're saying. So okay. we're trying to reduce it as much as possible by eliminating generators to be able to make the circle smaller. Gotcha. And the smaller circle means less possible. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Councilor Cordino. Through the chair, I, I just want to uh, just clarify. So the total duration for this whole project is 11 days, or is that just the overnight? No, just the overnight construction. So what is the total uh, duration of the project? So we, we believe it's going to be uh, several months, uh, but most of those uh, months involve... And Stan, if you don't mind coming up. So Stan Felice is our construction manager, and he can talk about the details of the project in terms of the segments. Okay, so to, to, to give you a solid answer, the answer is it's variable, okay? You know, we just finished a drill on pipeline 34, took us 60 days, we expected it to take 30 days. It could have taken 20 days. This drill, because it's a solid rock drill, and we know it's solid rock, okay, it's, it's a variable. And I don't want to stand here and say it's going to take four months or five months, because it could take six months. Okay, the 11 days that Ben talks about where we're proposing to work overnight, I'll explain that and maybe this will help us understand what's going on. Swiggo Steam Station is an un uninterruptible customer. Because they're uninterruptible, we have to put fittings on and build bypasses around our tie-in. Okay, National Grid's policy is when we put these fittings on, they're called T.D. Williamson fittings, we have to use heating blankets. We take the pipe up to a certain temperature, we put the fittings on, we start the welding process. Typically, we would use generators. As Ben alluded to, we're going to now put electric services in and we're going to be using just regular residential power. So that's part of the 11 days. Once we start welding, once we go into the welding process, until I bake out, which is a term we use, I got to work around the clock. Okay? The other portion of this 11 days is once we get the pilot in and we get the whole ream to an acceptable diameter, once I start pulling back, I'm going to have three lengths of pipe from Route 481 up the hill to where the city is dumping their uh, waste up there. Once I start pulling and I stop, we don't stop for any longer than we have to. So we're going to weld, we're going to x-ray, we're going to coat the joint, and we're going to go. So that's the remainder. So we're estimating these two processes to take about approximately 11 days. In between that, it's variable. You know, I could stand here and say six months, three months, five months, but I can't and I won't. So does that answer the question? Yeah, very, yes, it, I understand very, now. Very variable. Solid rock, you know, we're, we're hoping we're going to get 50 foot a day on our initial pilot. And then once we start back reaming, it's anybody's guess at that point. And, and will you be providing uh, the City of Oswego Engineering Department uh, daily updates on your progress so, so we know if you're on schedule for that 11 days or it's, or it's going slower? We can do that. We do that with other, you know, municipalities and, you know, I think, I think they'd be more than happy to do that. We I think that would be a good daily, idea. Absolutely. We can do daily conference calls, whatever it takes. Especially for the two counselors that are involved in the board, my Councilor exactly. Tesori and myself, you know, uh, we'll be getting right. calls, I'm sure. Right. Ask him when the project is uh, going to be over. Sure. All right. All right. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Ronnie. Ronnie. Can I ask? Uh, can you let the gentleman finish, okay. Miles, no, and then we'll, we'll get to. Sure. No, no. We're available for any questions you might have. Okay. Uh, gentleman in the back. Thanks for calling your gentleman, Ronnie. <laughs> Look at you're, are you expecting big rocks up there to, to, to drill through? No, so we're, we're drilling under the river. So under I the river there's... I understand. Sure. Remember the water pipe that's going across the railroad bridge? They thought they could drill through that river too. Well, guess what? They broke a bunch of drill bits and they decided to go over the bridge. They did, but technology... Has changed. Technology has changed. Equipment has changed. So you think you can go through that rock underneath that river? We believe we can, yes. How deep are you going? I don't have the profile. I would expect this to be 40 foot below the riverbed, 35 to 40 foot below the riverbed. 
We have a profile. I, do I, so, I, no, 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 I don't want to get too compl right, complex. complex. Uh, just general question. There's a, okay. minimum, there's a minimum depth below the bottom of the river that we need to be, and we will exceed that. Has the okay. DEC given you okay for this? We have the permits, I believe, at this point. And one other question. Has Andy given you permission to do this? The governor of the state of New York. Oh. <laughs> well, he's in control of Long Island right now. Andy's mandate. <laughs> exactly. Mandate from the public. This is this is a, a federal law that we're complying. I bow to Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We'll pay for your answer. Thank you. Any other uh, Councillor Hill? Yeah, this is a little bit off topic, but since we have such a large contingent from the company here, um, maybe we have an, an open ear because we don't seem to get anywhere uh, generally. But we have some issues downtown uh, in my district with lighting. Uh, right in front of our small businesses. This is their busiest time of the year. We've, I think it's been at least a week now that they've been out. Um, so maybe someone in the room could, could get some attention drawn to that. Uh, we sure. could work together on that. So um, I can, Wally Dangos. Yep. I'm the community and customer manager yep. for the city, and I did speak to the mayor about this. Today I noticed down near Oneida and West First Street, those must have just went out because we did repair them in July. So. How, it's been like a week, right? Uh, about a week or so, so, maybe a little over. Someone should call me right away, and then okay. the sooner the better. So we're going to take care of that as soon as... Because okay. I know some of the businesses that yeah. make calls, but they don't, they don't get the priority that, that other people do. So I get the calls from the businesses. So okay. I just want to relay that. And then yeah, second... No, we, we got, it, to, I got okay. it today. I sent it to our underground Great. guys. I think we're going to address that okay. as soon as we can. All right, I appreciate okay. that. And second is we're going to be working on the... Um, uh, the pocket park moving the power lines underground. Right. I don't know if you're familiar with that yet. I am familiar with that. Yep. So hopefully we can, you know, work together on all these projects and make sure they all go smoothly. And yeah, we're looking forward to doing that too. Okay. Excellent. Yes. Yep. Great. Yep. Thank you. Sorry to go off topic, no, but since okay. half your company's here, we could maybe get the right person. <laughs> not at all. I'm always connected to the mayor and his staff. Okay. So if you need right. something, you can go right, right there. Thank you very much. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Ron. Oh. Okay. Any other questions? Um. I see none. Uh, and, uh, engineering department have any questions for this gentleman? You've already met with him, of course. Any take? Uh, no, I, I don't have any concerns. There's no, uh, there's no approach. I think it saves not a lot of money. I think it saves uh, people, it saves a square lot, a lot of problems, a lot of heartache. Um, they redesigned the entire project based on our comments. Uh, I don't think you can get a better plan to get it under the river. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Well, I would just like to say uh, back when we, uh, I believe we tabled it, Kevin. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was tabled. The presentation was, was pulled uh, for refinement. This was the, 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 the refined presentation. The original request, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, for um, the grant a variance of the noise ordinance to the extent it was necessary. I think, again, as my original remarks uh, stated, I think that's still appropriate, although based on the presentation, it seems like that may be minimal if it's even exceeded. Uh, and if it is exceeded, it, it appears to be um, exceeding by those 11 days of overnight activity. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I see none. I, I would like to read this one more time before I, uh, I ask a motion. But at this point, I would also like to thank the members that are on this committee for, uh, you know, deferring to something different. And I think uh, you, you you did a nice job. Thank you very much. Uh, answering our questions, and I think we're all a little bit happier now that this is going to be a project that we can say that you know we did, uh, you know, hauled it to to see if there was a better way, and you, you guys did find a better way. Thank it it was a pleasure working with you. It was a pleasure working with city officials. We have nothing but respect for for everyone here. So thank you very much. Okay, so I'm going to read this one more time before I ask for a motion. It's a presentation by National Grid concerning Pipeline 55 relocation project 
Upgrading natural gas infrastructure in the city of Oswego request will include consideration of a waiver of the noise ordinance pursuant to the presentation by company representatives, which we've seen. Can I get a motion? Councillor uh, Cordino, uh, Councillor McBurdy. Yes. 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 <clears throat> okay, go on to new business. Is there any other new business before this committee? <coughs> I see none. I ask for a motion to adjourn. Councillor Cordino, Councillor McBurdy. Yes. 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 Turned out well. Good job.